Hey, it's Glenn. Um, this video requires an introduction because I was in a very dark place when I filmed the bulk of this video. Um, and I want to make it clear before before we go back in time because I I want to present the story of 2022 in vlog form in sequence in context as much as I can but in this case I was at my darkest moment and the absolute worst of it is not on camera but I did talk to the camera when I hit rock bottom and I want to make it clear to people who care about me that I'm okay right now. Things, things have gotten better since I filmed the bulk of this video. Um, my life is still changing in some very dramatic ways in the wake of all the things that have happened this month and despite the tone of this video the very honest raw tone of this video um, most of those things have been really good. Um, like my life is changing, but I'm not over. So to refresh you, if you don't remember where the previous video left off, Matt and I had just said goodbye after brainstorming doing a podcast, and in the previous video I also had mentioned that before that meeting with Matt I mentioned that I'd received some devastating news that was the emotional equivalent of being diagnosed with a terminal illness um, and that I couldn't talk about it at the time so now that you've been warned and brought back up to speed on where we left off in the last video let's go back in time to the day after my conversation with Matt um, positive things positive things happening um, Matt and I are going to do a podcast together it looks like at least we're moving ahead on that um, I got to go to a get-together um, with my tribe and you know not everyone was there but a lot of people were there and you know, one person I hadn't seen in years So it was, I mean years and years and years, so it was nice, it was really nice, but the thing I mentioned, I can't really, you know, I just wanted to gloss over it and just, you know, here's a note, something really terrible is going on. I, I you know, I haven't reviewed the footage, but I recall a few days ago likening it to having been diagnosed with a terminal illness I feel the same about it today but I really can't you know in the name of wanting this vlog series to be an honest story about my journey this year that you know I don't know how it ends, but I see 
two extreme possibilities. Um, like I said, in the first vlog I did this year, it was called, um, My Story Starts Here. I will link to it at the end, like it'll be floating around somewhere on the screen if you want to check that out, because I'm not, I'm going to try not to retread things I talked about in that video. But, you know, I, I pretty much, um, I talked about why things are, you know, the two extremes, one is disaster, one is victory. That's how this year ends for me. One or the other. And the other day, things moved much closer to disaster ending. Um, and I feel like I need to be more specific now. Like I made a note because I thought this would probably come up later and I wouldn't be able to just dance around it later so it needed to be noted as things were progressing but I didn't want to talk about it because I just want to focus on the positive. I want to, I want to focus on making plans for the future and convincing myself that there is a future. You know that, so the, my story starts here video, really just, I talked about, and again I haven't rewatched that one either since I edited it, but I talked about like where I'm at, you know, like why things are so precarious, but I really only talked about the financial aspects of that, as I recall. I don't think I talked about my mental state um, in that video, pr mainly because I don't think I really fully comprehended it until like right now. <laughs> um, I'm not even sure I fully comprehend it right now, but you know, I, I wasn't really aware of how much I was, I guess, being deceptive. Um, to myself and to other people. Um, so, I mean, that said, I have a... I have a confession to make. I'm crazy. <laughs> like, I mean, it's... I'm laughing, but it isn't funny. Um, like, I'm, I'm not in a good place financially, and as a result, I am not in a good place mental health wise either um or maybe I am like I don't know like given my circumstances just how on the cusp of one extreme or another I am and I don't know which way my life is going maybe I'm coping with it really well I don't know but I did say in the first video this year the first vlog this year that you were going to be my accountability partners and so I need to be honest with you and hold myself accountable to anyone following my story. I owe it to you. Well, I don't. I don't owe anybody anything. But I want to be really honest with anyone who's following my story about what that story really is. Like, what are all of the, the aspects of what's going on with me that are going to determine the direction this story takes over the year. And I will still have to leave some things out, but it looks very much like I am going to lose my home. Um, and there's not much I can do about it. Um, that's why I liken it to terminal illness, because I don't see a future if I lose my home, my house, um, so it's kind of like this, like the, there's only one way I save my house, and that's even iffy, and I'm not fully in control of it. Like, you know, if I get this job and can start making the mortgage payments and getting caught up on what I'm behind on financially, that's part of it. The other part of it is in someone else's hands. And that's the part I really can't talk about right now. But I don't have any ground to stand on 
if I don't get this job and start getting paychecks really fast, which is, I think it's likely I'll get the job. I don't think it's likely it's going to be fast. I mean, considering it took over a week to get the link to get the process going after my interview, like, and you know, like, I'm not the only thing on these people's agenda over there, like, it's not, I'm not saying they were negligent or anything, I'm just saying it took eight days, so I don't know how fast the next steps will go, how soon I'll be getting a decent paycheck if I get hired. It's all, it all, everything has to happen before foreclosure happens, and I have to convince another person that I'm worth saving, like, and again, I can't talk about that. So, like, um, my sister texted me, and was just saying, I want to help. And I mean, I'll be honest with you, that's part of where I'm at emotionally, and I know this is going to go, like, this video, like, is probably going to run forever, so, I, no, I'm not apologizing. If you want to follow my story, here's a story. You know, part of where I'm at, like, mentally and emotionally, is that it takes all of my willpower to reply to a text message or to answer the phone if it rings, or to check the mail, or to get up and go to work driving Lyft. Like, I had made plans with Matt to discuss doing a podcast together. And I was honest with him about it when he messaged me that night that it took all of my willpower to open up Messenger and reply that, you know, I'd been hit with some devastating crap that day, and I told him, I'm going to try to get myself, because that's not the mindset I wanted to be in when we were having that conversation. That's not the mindset I ever want to be in. And so I'm kind of running from it. I'm kind of running from the fact that I am dangerously depressed. Um, and again, I laugh as a defense mechanism. I don't know why, so I'm not laughing because I think it's funny, but I, I just kind of wanted to go to sleep and die. Like, I didn't want to, it's like there are two of me, because part of me, I did, like I made those plans because I genuinely do want to start a podcast with Matt. I think that would be a fantastic experience for both of us. Like a great expansion pack for our friendship, so to speak. It just makes a lot of sense and I know I would enjoy it and it would enrich my life. So you see, I am making plans, very deliberately making plans for the future. The problem is I don't really believe in the future. So it feels like I'm lying, like all my plans are lies. But the thing is, if I hadn't made those plans, I wouldn't have gotten out of bed. Like, I would have just... I wouldn't have had anything to force myself to do. There wouldn't have been another person relying on me to get out of bed and follow through with plans that I had with him. And then the next night, Last night, the party, the get-together, I wasn't any better. Like, I was a lot better the night slash morning after that really long, <laughs> really long video call with Matt. I mean, that it's the sort of thing, it's just healing for my spirit to have interactions with people who I care about and who care about me and to just enjoy life with a person mutually like it I was not in the same mindset as when I had to force myself to go through with the video chat 
Like I was ready to go. I was like, let's start the podcast now. I'm ready. But, you know, I slept. <laughs> and then I woke up and there's this get together that I wanted to see everyone. I wanted to embrace that experience. But I also wanted to just go back to sleep and die and never get out of bed ever again. Like, I just didn't want to move. I didn't want to go. And some, one of them texted me about something, and I was like, I'm not totally sure I'm going to make it tonight or what time I'm going to get there. You know, I was starting to give myself an out if I just wanted to stop existing <laughs> for a while, like, forever, like, and just never be seen again. And I'm not talking, like, that I was, like, having suicidal ideation at the, mo the moment. I just, it's like I just wanted to disappear. Like, to just not exist. Yeah, so then I'm still in that mindset. It's like, alright. I guess I'm getting ready. I don't know. And then I didn't get ready. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna go. I'm just kinda... I'm done with life, what's the point of even doing anything? But I didn't go back to bed because I had plans and people that I had plans with. So then it's like I didn't really, being me, I didn't really have an option because other people started messaging me. Sarah, Nick Aston's wife, who was, you know, you know Nick from my videos, um, but I've known her longer, much longer, but she started messaging me and Matt about vegan pizza because she was ordering pizzas and wanted to know what to do, and I largely stayed out of the conversation, but, you know, then I had to reply because it looked like I was ignoring everyone, and I was, but not, it wasn't personal. Um, and so then it's like, okay, she's ordering pizza specifically for me. I guess I need to start getting ready. <laughs> and, um, then in the middle of, like, so I took a shower, and I was going to be late at this point. I was going to be, like, two, or an hour and a half late. Because I dragged my feet so long. But, so I took a shower was doing my hair and stuff, and then Zach called me, um, and he was almost there, he was on his way, he too was running late. A lot of people were hours late, that's common, so with our get-togethers. It's my alarm, time to wake up. Um, but yeah, so then we start talking, and again, like I said, like with the conversation with Matt, that heals my spirit. Like just hearing another voice of someone who loves me. And so then I was in a much better place, mentally. I mean, and that's what it takes. It takes me actually interacting with people for me to break out of my dark moods. And so that's why it's really important for me to continue to make plans. But. Yeah, so then I went to the party and had a lovely time, and it was really good for my spirit. So, I'm trying to make plans moving forward with people, but there's a part of me that wants to just stop making plans. That's why this podcast thing would be really good, because, you know, we still have to get together and talk details, but we're talking about doing it every two weeks. So that would keep me going all year. Like, we're going to plot out kind of topics for 26 episodes the next time, next weekend when we get together on Saturday. Um, so yeah, that's going to keep me going all year. Whatever happens to me, if we get that podcast going, I will have plans <clears throat> every two weeks with someone who cares about me and someone who's conversation, who interacting with him will heal my spirit every two weeks. Um, so I just need to keep making plans between, like, 
Um, so my sister texted me, and this is where I kind of realized, oh, oh, I'm nuts. <laughs> like, let me uh, pull this up. Got to put my fake eyes on. So my sister had texted me Thursday and said, I'm trying to help you. I, being in the mental state of can't, didn't reply. So then she texted me yesterday. Like, I didn't even read the text. Um, because whatever it was, whatever it was, I thought was going to reinforce doom. And I wanted to get through a meeting about a podcast. I wanted to get through that get-together um, and have a good time. I didn't want doom and gloom reinforced, so I didn't even read the messages, but I read them today. So the one from Thursday, I'm trying to help you. Then Saturday, she sent one. I'd like to talk to you in person. I took Monday and Tuesday off, and I'm getting a hotel in Dallas. I just want to help. And so I didn't know how to reply to that because, you know, I'm just thinking, no, no, you can't help. You can't help. And like, how do I articulate this? Like that you can't, you can't come to Dallas, what is now tomorrow, and uh, do anything but make things worse for me or make things harder for me. Like, give me one more thing that I have to juggle when I can barely move. It's not hard. Like, it's not hard to heal my spirit. It is also not hard to push me into a complete shutdown. So, I mean, I'm really fluctuating between two extremes all around. But, okay, so here is my very lengthy reply. I'm having to work at all hours those days to cover public storage and car insurance by the 8th. And I have follow-up stuff regarding the job interview I have to squeeze in somehow. Which is, you know, regarding that link. Even though even bothering with a full-time job when I know full well... I'm See, okay, here's where I start when I read over this recognizing that I am not mentally okay. <laughs> um... Even though even bothering with a full-time job when I know full well I'm going to be homeless is an empty gesture since rent is soaring in DFW to the point that I can't even afford a one-room apartment on the salary I'll be earning working 10 to 13 hours a day, 6 days a week. My only hope for a livable future was keeping the house. You don't need to come tell me that I'm over in person. And that's really all you'd be doing. And, you know, like, I agree with that paragraph, man. Like, because that's something, like, when I got that news that um, I'm probably going to lose my house, I started looking. Like, I didn't immediately just give up. Like, I started looking at other options. I started, like, looking at rental prices, and they're soaring. Like, it's far more than I can barely manage here to rent a one-room apartment. I can't do it and eat. Even with a full-time salary, I can't do it. Um, even places where I know people who live there and it's more affordable, but their windows get shut out. There's so many shootings in these apartments. Like, even those are obscenely expensive. So, yeah, I mean, I looked around and all it did was make me more hopeless. That's why I was like, I feel like I've been diagnosed with a terminal illness. I can't, there are no solutions that I see. Um, so anyway, I continue. Okay, no, this is where I started realizing, oh, I'm two people up here. That's fun. Because I'm like, I'm pretending I think there's hope going through the motions of some fantasy where everything is going to be fine is the only way I can keep moving and get through everything I need to do before I go under. 
Like this part gets kind of scary and this is something I don't really want to read you because this is part that kind of reveals to myself and to you that I've been being deceptive. Because you know, like I process things as a writer when I'm writing. I, things clarify for me when I'm writing. So this is me writing. So I said, it would help if you could edit that last book and do a couple more muffin videos with me. I have a muffin is the hand puppy who was in a conversations and sunglasses and I really want to do. I have a couple more ideas for those videos. And see, this is me happy, like making plans for things that are good for my spirit, while at the same time, let me continue to read. I have a recording and posting schedule for YouTube and I'm trying to tell a story for people with whatever I post this year. I want people to see how I tried, how I cared about and treasured them, and how the conclusion was inevitable without some miraculous event to change the direction of the narrative. I'm filming way in advance and setting the videos up on YouTube to drop on certain days over the course of the year, even after I am unable to film and post new ones. I also want to post all of my unpublished books as PDFs on my website at the last minute, when it's clear I will never be able to afford putting them out in print, along with notes about where each series was going, which is why I could really use notes on Nod 6 so that I don't have to publish a rough draft. But driving to Dallas to reiterate that this is where I am and that there is no hope and no point won't help. I already know, and I'm doing all I can while I still have time. I'm pretending I have hope so I can have happy moments with people and just enjoy things while they last. The longer I pretend, the more time there is for something to change before the end. For that previously mentioned miracle to present itself. So pretending isn't really a lie so much as a useful delusion I can share with everyone so that we can all be happy as long as the universe allows it. But once I hit the bottom and lose everything, the world doesn't let people get back up. The world won't let me recover, and after nine years of fighting, I am unwilling to keep fighting for nothing more than basic survival when I know the entire social system we are trapped in is designed to deny me everything. I won't move to another city or country, because without my tribe I have no joy. And, you know, those, to clarify that, my sister lives in another country and has in the past said, well, you'll just come live here. No. And my dad, who lives in Costa Rica, well, you'll just come live in Costa Rica. No. I can't. I won't. I won't. Because if I, if I can't be near my kids, I can't. Ugh. I just don't have any motivation to keep fighting, so... Alright, stop it. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. Um, okay, so... Because without my tribe I have no joy. I won't let myself become a burden to them because I'll never be able to rise back out of it. And once I'm there, I'm stuck. And they'll get tired of it, whether they know it or not. I know they love me. But they'll start to feel just as trapped as I do once it's clear my wings are permanently broken. 
and I love them too. I won't turn them into caretakers. And that's me speaking from six years of being a caretaker. You know, like, knowing that yes, you love someone, and yes, you are choosing to help someone, and you wouldn't change that choice for anything, but it's hell. It's hell when someone can't take care of themselves, and I guess that's the future I see for myself if I go under, because I just don't see, I just don't see a future, and I don't want, I don't want to become anybody else's problem any more than I already have, so, back to the email, I won't turn them into caretakers. I'll give the universe every opportunity to get on my side. I have things I'm setting in motion that I would love to keep going for years and years to come. But if it declines the offer at every turn, the universe, which is the rational prediction, I will already have all the loose ends of my story neatly tied up. So I don't see anything you can do to help by coming to town, especially tomorrow and Tuesday, when I have so much on my plate already. Thanks for thinking you could, though, I guess. So, so reading over that message I just sent, like, shows me that I'm just mentally not okay. Like, I am both hopeful, like, even though, like, there, I think I'm overwhelmingly hopeless. But at the same time, I am making plans. Like I said there at the end, that I am making plans that I hope, you know, things like can go on for years and years. Like, you know, like talking about the, uh, the podcast idea. Like even YouTube, setting up a schedule and stuff. Like I am hopeful that I'm going to continue doing everything that I love to do for years and years. I'm making plans accordingly. I'm making plans for the future, but I do not believe in that future. Like, I really feel like I'm spinning my wheels, that I'm, you know, with every video I add, it's another chapter in my very long goodbye letter. And I'm, I mean, really, I'm not thinking of, like, proactively taking my own life at the end of this story. I'm just thinking of giving up. Like, I'm thinking of it in terms of I quit. Like, I'm just gonna not get back up. Like, I'm just gonna wait for the world to kill me if things get as bad, as bad as they can. And, you know, I guess that's what it is, like... If my only options are move to another city and lose my you know it's not about the house is the thing The house is about my family. My tribe and if I I'm trying to talk without getting my face wet. If I lose the house and my only options are, my only options for a future are move to another city and lose my family or move to another country and lose my family or 
turn my families into caretakers because I can't afford to make it on my own. That I don't want that future. I don't have any motivation to fight for it. I just want to disappear. That beeping is the coffee pot telling me it's clocking out. <laughs> um, so that's where I am. I'm Schrodinger's Glen. I'm equal parts making plans for the future that will carry on for years and 100% giving up. Like 100% not caring and not intending to try. Because that's where I'm at. Like if, if things work out, then I've already put things in motion where I'm going to have a really enjoyable future. Like I'm going to have, I'm going to get so much out of life moving forward. But if things don't work out, I'm also making plans to disappear. You know, like, um, I have been, I've been seriously, I'm going to post if I lose the house the day I'm out of here. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's legitimately my plan. Um, and it may be a terrible idea to tell you this, but... I told you, gonna be a hard couple months here at first, and this is where I'm at mentally, so my actual plan is what I said in there. If I lose the house, I'll get friends to help me pack it up, empty it out, and I will post all of my unpublished novels on my website as PDFs, you can just download them for free. Um, and I will have posted, like I'm filming, and this is kind of like going to be my process anyway, moving forward, is to film like my conversations and sunglasses and I can't sleep videos, and I'm going to start another series in the same vein on a weekly basis, even though I'm really posting them monthly. So like... My vlogs are the only thing that, you know, it's going to catch up and be a little bit closer to real time as it goes. But, yeah, that's the plan. All my books will be on the my website, and the house will be empty, and videos will keep posting onto YouTube because I'm scheduling those posts well in advance. I'm uploading them now, and... I don't have to be there for them to post in December if I'm gone in July. And I mean, that's my plan is I'm just going to disappear. I'm going to tell everyone I have a place to go. I'm going to tell everyone I'm cool, I'm good, and then I'm just going to give up. Because... I cannot bear the thought of backsliding that far and having to fight just to stay in hell. Um, You know, I, I usually find a way to end these videos. Like, if I start out in a bad place, I usually process my way through to a happier, like, resolution. But I can't do that. 
this time. And you know, like, moving forward, I'm not going to wallow in this. Like, I've told you this. I've now let you in on not only what I'm dealing with financially, but with what I'm dealing with mentally and emotionally. Um, and yeah, I'm going to go back to making plans as though everything is going to work out fine. So it's not like I'm going to keep wallowing in this depression on camera in every video after this. But I will tell you if things change. It's just, as I'm going on this journey, this is where I'm at. Right now, right here, on April 3rd, 2022. This is where I'm at. Okay, so, quick update. It's, um, April 9th, so happy... National Unicorn Day. Um, it's also inexplicably winter today again. I don't know. <laughs> the weather is so unpredictable in Texas. Um, okay, so I don't want this vlog to be a downer, but I do want this vlog to be real. As I've said many times, I want this vlog to be honest, so I don't know. I mean, this happened yesterday, so it's not as raw as it was yesterday. Yesterday was a bad day. Yesterday was a crazy roller coaster for me. Like, literally like a crazy roller coaster. Clearly I lost my mind. Um... And the night before, I was already losing my mind. Just based on just based on where I left off, things have not gotten better. Um, so I was already working on my novel entitled "I Wrote This Novel When I Was Insane," because whenever I get to the absolute breaking point, and then you know get right up to the line, and then cross it, I find myself opening up that manuscript and just going with it. Yeah, it's interesting. I don't know, like, how it ends or anything yet. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. Just every time I'm about, like, shoot myself in the head crazy. I sit down and write, and that's very painfully the way that this novel will be written, so if and when I finish it, I can't say, because the whole thing is a surprise to me, but yeah, so I was already at writing in this particular manuscript crazy. And then yesterday happened, and yesterday was terrible. But, I mean, but there's bad and good, like bad. I am losing the house. I am losing everything. Um... And I had a complete, nearly psychotic breakdown. I don't know what the timeline is. I don't know exactly how it's all going down. And I'm probably, I'm, like, if I had made this, I didn't make this video yesterday. I just couldn't bring myself to. It would have been very ugly. Um, but, right, what I was getting to is part of the breakdown that I was having was just I have no hope. I 
had given up on that job that I applied for, that I interviewed for, and I've talked in other vlogs about how hard it is to get an interview with anyone with a six month gap, or no, a six year gap in your employment history. But, you know, it, you know I was just like, as of yesterday, nothing can come fast enough to save me from a life I'm unwilling to live. And after so long, just because, you know, they sent the link, but it didn't work, and I emailed back, and they didn't email me back. You know, I let them know the link they sent me to put my resume and stuff in the system, because that's, that's where they actually do the official job offering from, is in their system there. So, that's what they were sending me a link to put my stuff in so that they could, if they so chose, offer me a job. But, I mean, that's one thing, is, uh, yesterday they did send me the link, finally. And I did start to feel a little bit better after I got all of that done. Um, the link worked this time, <laughs> which was helpful. So I got all my stuff set up. So now it is a matter of waiting to see if they make me an offer. And I feel more hopeful about it. That's the only tiny shred of hope I have. But it's not really much if I weigh it against reality. Because, yeah. I mean, I can't afford, even with, even with this job, I can't afford to live. I can survive. I don't want to survive. But I'm not going to retread all of that ground. I just want to let you know where I'm at in this journey, where we're at in the story of my year, and that I don't know... You know, it's just like the crazy novel I'm writing. I don't know where it's going. Exactly. Like, I don't know how or if I'm going to cope with this. I don't know what I'm going to choose to do. You know, like, even hopeless, I went ahead and did all of that job stuff last night. So... You know, I think if they offer me the job, I will accept the job. It's just... I don't know what is going to become of me. I don't know if having a full-time job is going to make a difference at all in my ultimate fate. So, right. But yeah, I just wanted to give a quick update, and um, um, Matt's coming over tonight to hammer out, like, what we're going to do with this podcast project we're working on, and, you know, pretending that I'm not doomed, I'm really excited about it this podcast thing, and if it, if it comes together tonight, then I can probably say a little bit more about it. Like, I don't want to say stuff like what we talked about too much, even though there are snippets of our conversation in the previous vlog, um, if you want to check that out. But yeah, like, I, we had some ideas, but we'll have a more solid idea of what we're going to be doing and what we're going to be calling it after after we hang out tonight. So I may vlog some of that. I may not. Just to show you that I'm not just sitting around doing nothing while I'm in this frankly dangerous mental state. 
Um, I am still giving myself a chance to get out of it, you know, I, I am still trudging through the swamps of sadness, waiting on a luck dragon to fly by, and if it does, I will grab its foot, no hesitation, I will grab that luck dragon by the paw, and fly out of the swamp. Never ending story reference there for those of you not in the know. I could do a whole video on the never ending story and I probably will. Especially considering the state of mind I'm in. Because that whole movie is 100% all about a little boy overcoming a deep, dark depression. Yeah, so anyway, I mean, that's where I'm at this morning. Um, gonna clean up a little. You know, my, my hours are backwards because of driving Lyft, so noon is like my midnight, so I'm gonna clean up, eat, and go to sleep, and when I wake up, it'll be time for hanging out with Matt. And before, yeah, and we're gonna do a conversations and sunglasses with Nick Aston as well. So, I've got a I've got a busy evening planned, which is good. It's very good for me. I'm going to try to make as many plans with people as I can just to keep me moving and to keep me feeling like there is something I'm obligated to do before I 100% give up. So, that's where I'm at, and I will check in a bit later. Does Matt know? Not yet. Do you want him to not know yet? I mean, no, I'm going to talk to him about it later.